Andy, why don't you start off just by telling us a bit about who you are and your background and, and those sorts of things. Uh, okay. Um, so, yeah, my name's uh, Andy Mallett. I'm the Managing Director of a business called Plexus. Um, my quick background, so I was uh, originally in the financial, uh, financial services industry, then went into management consulting for a while, and then uh, when I decided to leave that, I decided to uh, start a business and wanted to do something a bit different um, that was a bit more challenging. And uh, uh, a friend of mine and I had an idea that uh, no one liked lawyers or law firms, and uh, perhaps it was a better, better way to uh, operate a, uh, a law firm or legal service business than um, uh, people had envisaged previously. And so uh, about uh, five and a half years ago, we started Plexus with a simple idea that about 85 cents in the dollar you spend with uh, a law firm either goes to partnership profits or overheads. And so by inverting that paradigm and still having all the things you love from a law firm, so you know, top quality lawyers, but without, the overhead, without a lot of the overheads and uh, with, uh, without a partnership model, we could deliver better value for money legal services than it had ever been considered. Um, and that model uh, went very well, grew very rapidly. Uh, and within a space of about three years, we had about 60 of the top 100 companies in Australia using our services. And, it's um, pretty significant growth. That's, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, and then, um, and then we came up with the idea that um, <laughs> when we started looking at underlying legal tasks and trying to figure out how to do the task better, so our sort of first part of our model was kind of a really an arbitrage play around um, stripping out inefficiency, but actually we wanted to get underneath the task and say how can we do these in tasks, tasks better. We're doing a, a applying Lean Six Sigma and some process mapping methodologies to that, and it kind of became pretty clear that a lot of legal tasks are ultimately rules-based, and as you know, software is all about rules. <laughs> And so I came up with what at the time was a, a unique idea, which is around applying software um, to automate legal tasks. Sure. Uh, and at the time, everyone said it couldn't be done. <laughs> and uh, we spent two and a half years proving that. Okay. Um, and tell us a little bit about that. Tell us about, the, about you know, the, the, what you've built and, and, and tell us what it does and give us, give us a bit of the story. Uh, okay, so, um, so going back about three years ago, uh, about three and a half years ago, we started on this journey. Um, my, my big f focus from uh, my management consulting days, I suppose, is to focus on what is our core competency and then try and find other people who could bridge competencies as we move into adjacent markets. And so given our core competency was not around software development, I said, well, we, we really need a partner to do this. Um, there wasn't anyone in the legal industry that had any expertise in this. And uh, uh, there was one company out of New York that was pretty early in their journey, but uh, was probably at the time the global experts and kind of legal expert systems. And so um, we met with them, they said, yes, we can build it. The original, uh, the first use case was um, uh, quite a niche application, which is for running um, uh, promotion. So if you think about a consumer focused business like a, a Qantas or a L'Oreal, or uh, we know around the world trip, I'm sure you guys have all entered one at, um, previously. It's actually got a lot of re regulatory complexity about it because every state's got different legislation that go governs gambling laws ultimately. Um, and so you need terms and conditions which comply with all those different laws and you need permits and short form terms and conditions, a whole lot of other stuff. So um, it's quite a, quite a mess. It takes about two to three weeks to get the legal task done in a traditional format. A traditional law, law firm will charge you a couple of thousand dollars for the, for the um, service. And um, we had a, a client who said, this is a nightmare for us. Could you come to us with a solution? And so we, we started working with these, um, this organisation in, in New York who had a bit of a platform. If you think about it, it's kind of like word, what WordPress is for, for websites. You know, they were sort of presenting their platform as the similar thing for building legal automation solutions on. Um, there was, I suppose there was, two, there, was, there was three things that happened. One is probably uh, the, the individual on my team wasn't <coughs> capable of dealing with uh, you know, what is quite a complex software project. Um, the second thing is that their platform wasn't really as mature as they perhaps led us to believe. And, and the third thing, as is so often the case with software development, is that uh, the fringe use cases were, were pretty immense. Um, and so we probably spent two years, I don't know, probably all up four or five hundred thousand dollars on that journey yep. before we said we're just throwing good money after bad and, and decided to and so I mean, I've seen that package, and it's certainly it, it, it's it's a it's a powerful package. It, it, there's no question about it. What was the tipping point? When did you decide, okay, we, we need to move from from uh, software as a service package to something that we've built ourselves? We had an original business case around both productivity for us as the service provider, but also um, productivity for the end user. Yep. Um, and there was a couple of things. One is just quite clearly the platform, their platform was not stable. 
Yes. Um, and so we consistently had issues of you know falling over and bugs and issues that shouldn't be really be present, particularly in a, in a platform. That's one yeah. thing you're building a bit of bespoke software. Um, so we got frustrated with that relationship, and um, and they weren't living up to what they'd committed to us, which okay. is which is problematic. The second thing is, is if you think about because of the the friends use cases, it meant that our lawyers had to spend a lot of time essentially redrafting the output to make sure yeah. it, was, it was fit for purpose. Yeah. And uh, and it was because, if you can imagine, a scenario may be that there's 100 different prizes, there's different draw dates, there's six different steps to enter, yeah. um, which all sounds pretty easy when you put to put on a, on, a, um, on a flyer or on an ad, but when you actually think about the layers of complexity of a, delivering that outcome, but then also ensuring that all interfaces and agrees with um, you know, what is a couple of uh, you know, hundreds of regulations across Australia. It's very difficult. And you know, I know the project, what, what they've achieved, if you think about it, is, is they've created a platform that non-lawyers, and I mean you know, admin people in, in these organisations can use to effectively produce incredibly complex documents that cover a range of, a whole range of areas and the, the complexity is, has been months and months in the analysis, um, uh, re really with ease. So tell us, you, you've decided, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna custom uh, build this thing. What's, what's, your, what's your thought process? Tell us about before development, what were you thinking, what were you looking for, what were you worried about? Give us a sense of your world at that point. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny now, I, I, I had our, our, our quarterly board meeting last week and um, one of the guys on the board was like, this is an amazing business. <laughs> and I said, Pete, 18 months ago, you told me to shut this down. <laughs> and he, he, he clearly did not remember saying that, but yeah. uh, <laughs> our chairman pulled it out of the board notes later. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I, I was, you know, as a, as a as CEO, managing director, I, I was you know, copying a fair bit of heat because I'd spent a lot of capital at this stage. And we'd made commitments to clients also. So, yep. you know, it was not a situation that anyone, any business leader wants to be in. Mm. And so then doubling down and saying, okay, we're gonna add another layer of complexity that we're gonna go to a top down build on this is, um, is quite concerning. And, you know, I, I, uh, I presented, <laughs> I said to the board last week that the only reason we got here is through tenacity, but perhaps the reason we got there is through some cost bias that I, yeah. <laughs> I'm spending all that money, I didn't want to be beaten. Um, but, you know, I, I, was, I was cognizant of the fact that if we spend the same money again and still don't get to the right outcome, it's a, it's a really bad problem and yeah. not a good story. Sure. Um, and, uh, you know, when I was a management consultant, I, I spent a lot of time advising CFOs and, you know, I remembered that um, I think our data point was 72% of IT projects never realised their business case. and they're internally focused projects. You don't have you know, product market fit and all the yeah. other things when you're selling software that, um, uh, to worry about. So uh, I was deeply concerned that we were gonna repeat history um, there. And what do they say? History doesn't repeat itself, but it does rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so, so we, we said, um, you know, so I was um, once bitten twice, twice shy. So I fortunately had a, uh, a member of my team at the time, she was our CFO who was an IT consultant and just one of the best professionals I've, I've ever worked with. I uh, asked her to lead the project. Um, and so through a, she's a highly systematic uh, person as you probably get, IT consultant, CFO. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so we did a pretty detailed analysis of, of the risks and the options. And, uh, and we had a, a really good product manager on board by that stage. And, uh, and so going through the process, we said, look, the only option if we are going to do this again is, is to build a custom software to do it. Um, and so then we, we, we did about three months of analysis to say, you know, do we think it could be built? Um, we, um, we actually did an initial project with you guys, I think, yep. to, to uh, validate our, our hypothesis from a technical standpoint. Um, and the, you know, the answer came back and said, yes, it conceivably can be done. It's just not going to be easy. <laughs> yeah, and, and interestingly, the, the challenge here, that w it, wasn't, it wasn't what I would call a pure technical challenge, as in we knew that we could take data and create documents, that was, that was never in question. The challenge was, could we do it in such a way that it would, be, it would make sense, that someone would be able to look at it and actually follow the process through with what are, mathematically speaking, you know, millions and millions of permutations and combinations that thing can go through. And, and so when we talked about validation, that was really the piece we were doing. And we did, I think, something like 450 slides of wireframes by the end of it. We, we had we'd pushed this thing in 
uh, pretty, we pushed it pretty hard. Yeah, I think uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm not famous in our organisation for being what other people think is reasonable. I think I'm entirely reasonable. But uh, <laughs> I said uh, this has to be easy enough that someone who's got no experience with promotions can do it. Yes. Um, yet complex enough that it'll address uh, a anything within 90% of use cases. Yeah. And so, I mean, our rough estimate is there's about 20, 25 million different outcomes that it can generate. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not straightforward in terms of that. <laughs> <laughs>